Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Friday, April 19, 2024. I pray that God will continue to be with you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. Our reading today comes to us from Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 35 to 37. And it says, But love your enemies, and do good, and lend open for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and he shall not be judged. Condemn not, and he shall not be condemned. Forgive, and he shall be forgiven. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his holy word. A reminder to us that we must practice those things which he has commanded us to practice. And so we are admonished in the reading this morning that we should love our enemies and we should do good to them. We should learn to give, not expecting anything in return. The saying goes that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so we need to extend the hand of kindness and charity to those around us, not just to the people that we are close to, not just to our families, not just to our friends, but those that we don't see every day, those who we are not close to, and even more so, those who are considered our enemy, whether by the choice of their own or whatever. If they are our enemies for whatever reason, then we need to show love and kindness towards them. Because when we do this, we are representing our Father which is in heaven. Because God, He bless the unthankful and He also bless the evil. The Word of God says what? The rain fall on the just and the unjust. So don't so God does not only bless those who are good, He bless even those who are not good, right? Why does He do that? Because that's just His nature. He's naturally a loving God and He loves all of His creation in spite of the fact that all His creation don't love Him. And so He doesn't love to get love. He loves because He is the embodiment of love. Amen? And so, we must not treat others the way they deserve. Amen? And I would go as far as even say that we must do unto others as we would also have them do unto us. The reading go on to tell us that we must be merciful to others. And this is something that we need to practice earnestly because the truth is that some of us can be very harsh and cruel especially when we are in the right or we believe that we are right or we have some kind of edge over another person we can be artless so even though and this is something that we have to to, to get a grip on we don't have to be harsh with each other what happened to mercy what about showing grace even though you know that the person deserves to be punished? You can stay your hand of justice towards the person. Or you can show the person a little mercy. So you don't have to be harsh. Even if you decide that you are going to, 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 to go through some form of punishment. You don't have to be critical about it. You can, you know, quench it. So you're showing mercy even though the person's action come with consequences. Because that's how God treats us. Do you think that God slap us in our head back every time we do something wrong? Sometimes he holds back his wrath and his anger because what? Of his everlasting love towards us. And he wants us to change. And so he's giving us another opportunity 
to change so we don't have to always be judge jury and executioner because god doesn't treat us that way god is merciful and if we want god to continue show us mercy then we also have to show others mercy we can't be heartless amen then the final verse says that what we are not to judge and this is a big problem for a lot of us because sometimes we can be so judgmental towards each other sometimes we are so critical i mean we are quick to judge rather than to give guidance we are quick to persecute rather than to forgive i don't know what kind of attitude is that and especially if we are walking after the character of christ we can't exhibit this kind of behavior we just can't judgment belong to god and god only god never called any of us to be judged at least not yet the bible says that the time will come when we will judge angel but no not now and when he talks about judge angel do you understand what it means it talking about satan and his angel so we are not given that responsibility to judge each other but what the lord says that we must help to give guidance to one another so that we can walk in the path of righteousness so if you see a brother or a sister sleep are slipping up you help to guide them back on the path don't tear them down don't make them feel like they have done the worst thing on the planet and there's just no hope for them who told you that you aren't god you are not god and so we are not supposed to be condemning anybody because the bible says that with the same kind of judgment that we measure out to others it will be measured back to us and so if you condemn others you yourself will be condemned if you judge others you yourself will be judged and the, the funny thing about it all is that when the shoe is on the other foot we have a problem we don't have a problem when we are casting the stone you know but when we start to get the stone now we are complaining you shouldn't be complaining because you had no problem when you were casting stone on others and so we must as i said help each help each others to we must help each other to grow spiritually to grow in righteousness in the fear of the lord the bible says that the fear of the lord is what the beginning of wisdom and so when we are given these knowledge and these instruction and these this information we need to be wise you know we use, don't just take them and just oh i know this i know that but you never execute it at least not the way that you should so you pack yourself full of knowledge but it, it it makes no difference in your life so what's the point what's the point you understand so we must be wise as christians we must be wise and it doesn't only go for christians this is something that anybody can apply to their own life this is a principle in the general sense that goes for anybody at all whether it be christian or unbelievers and so i pray that as we consider these things that we will not be ignorant to what the lord is asking us to do and finally he says that we must learn to forgive and this is a, something that i've heard people say so often time oh you know i just can't forgive him or i just can't forgive her or i forgive but i can't forget we find all the excuses in the world not to do the thing that makes sense and i'm like then how do you and i expect to be better when we are hiding away and pushing back those things that will actually make us better you don't want to forgive others but you want others to forgive you if you are not willing to forgive then you don't deserve forgiveness it's as simple as that if you want to be critical about it if you are going to be critical about it and technical about it then you don't deserve forgiveness either because you are not willing to forgive and the bible says do unto others as what you will have them do unto you so it's as simple as that but i'm so thankful 
that God is not like you and me. And so he does not treat us as we deserve. So even though we are reluctant to forgive others, God said, just ask and I will forgive you. And even that, sometimes it doesn't prick our mind to say, come on now, Ryan, this nonsense, you need to just put it away. Because see, see what you just did? And God forgave you for it. You don't deserve the forgiveness, you know? But he gave it to you because what? He loves you and he promised that if you confess and if you are sincere about your confession, that he's going to forgive you. And so friends, I encourage you and I encourage myself th this morning that these principles, we will apply them to our lives so, so that we can be an example to those around us. Be an example to our brothers and sisters. Be an example to our families, our friends, our neighbors, all those who we come in contact with. Because we are ambassadors of heaven. And what the world see in us, that's what they are going to believe that Jesus represents. And if we don't want to give a misrepresentation of who God is, then we got to do the right thing. Amen. So may God continue to bless you and your families and may God keep you all as you continue to walk in his righteousness and his favor. Amen.